What's up guys? Thank you for watching this episode of the My Living Legacy vlog. As always, I'm Tyler Jack Harris. And in this episode, we're gonna be unpacking what GVL Hustle is doing amidst this COVID-19 crisis for the community of Greenville. Um, we're gonna get into it throughout this episode, but GVL Hustle is a group that myself and Ryan Alford started about three years ago. Uh, really as kind of a anti-networking networking event, just a way to find like-minded people uh, like us and put them in a place where they could have real transparent conversations. But we wanted to use this opportunity of crisis to really give back to the community. And when you look at that word hustle, GVL hustle, it's gonna take hustle for us to get out of this. But it's also gonna take hustle from everybody to pitch in to help those that are in need. And so as you watch this video, um, I wanna just put it out there that you can go to gvlhustle.com. 100% of the proceeds when you go buy all the new merchandise, we're dropping new shirts like every single day. 100% of the proceeds go to the United Way of Greenville's COVID-19 fund. I uh, mean the world for me to, for you to support our efforts in supporting Greenville uh, and especially supporting those that have been devastated uh, during this crisis. So with that guys, I hope you enjoy this episode. Hey guys, it's Ryan Alford. Welcome to I think everything's a special edition now. I feel like I, feel like I need to put that caveat. A special News flash. edition. Newsflash. Newsflash. A special edition of the Radical Marketing Podcast. Uh, in all seriousness, we, uh, we're we moving along, you know, keeping things real. We've got our almost, I think it's got to be, I'm going to call it six feet of social distance here. Yeah. You it know. feels like six feet. It feels like six feet. I'm joined by a good friend and one of my co-founders with uh, GVO Hustle, Tyler Harris. Yes, good to sir. Have you. Good to be here. I, you know, I'm running out of adjectives for you, man. I yeah. mean, influencer, entrepreneur, C E E E O O O O. You know, whatever. No, I know. Yeah, I know. You you got your hands on a lot. The modern man, modern extraordinaire. Man. Breadwinner. Yeah. What are we? Yeah, I know. What are we calling you? These Sales days? wolf. <laughs> you got. You know, I'm. We're the agency, but you're the marketer. I'm trying to get out of the jack of all trades, master of none. <laughs> that's not the. That's not the intent. But hey. Yeah, but uh, thrilled to have you, man. And um, you sure. know, we're going to talk breakdown. Um, it's been interesting. We the last couple podcasts we've done have been about you know marketing in yeah. in uh, amongst the. COVID-19 situation, which is, you know, we're still in the middle of, hopefully on the mm -hmm. back end soon. Uh, no one knows. That's part of the the uncertainty is what's kind of, I think, crushing everyone yeah, right now. It's like but hour by hour. Hour by hour. But, uh, yeah. you know, we've been talking about and telling brands that we work with to pivot and to think about other ways they can be out there, but to not be separating themselves from their mm -hmm. customers or their people and you know, there's going to be reflection on back on what action or yeah. inaction you had in this period. But I think it teed up perfectly for us with what we established with GVL Hustle. Yeah. Um, you know, being a platform that we developed a couple of years ago, and I know we're both proud of, you know, where it's gone. And we've been on a little bit of a hiatus with our events. We were looking forward to kicking that back up in April. Yep. But, uh, I think uh, social distancing rules uh, aside, we might have to put off the uh, the event. Yeah, for sure. But uh, I am excited about where we've kind of pivoted to. Um, we've got the website up for those watching the video. Um, but we've launched a bunch of new merchandise, and we wanted to find a way to give back to the community in a way with um, – everything going on you know you you want to impact you know that everyone out there is struggling but you know i think local has been important to us and yep. how could we make an impact and do something you know you can't get out there we've both taken pride in getting to events and sharing knowledge and being a resource for people but in absence of that um that personal connection though you can still do it with we were yeah. about zoom beforehand yeah. and other things but in absence of that what could we do so been really proud of you know where we've taken gvl hustle and you know i know you're you're proud of what we've done with it yeah i mean it was it was really our goal from the very beginning was to make an impact in greenville yeah. and really give back to, to the city that's given so much to us and as we were kind of going through that process of figuring out a way to do that a way pretty much presented itself in this crisis that we're in um so yeah i mean it's it's something that you know it's it's a great way for people to come together 
Mm. It's a great way for people to support a great cause, but then also get some great stuff that they'd be proud to wear. Uh, it seems like there's more shirts coming out every day. There's new <laughs> designs. Every time I look at the website, there's a new shirt on there. Yeah, and no. so, uh, and the price point is great, and it gives people the opportunity to, to feel like they're a part of something bigger than themselves. And I yeah. think ultimately that's what we wanted GVL Hustle to turn into, was something that people didn't just come to – network and meet somebody new that they really wanted to become a part of something that was bigger agreed and this is a great way to do that yeah and you know Sauer and i have both taken maybe a little bit of heat uh, that neither one of us really gave a shit about to be honest but uh <laughs> about the word hustle when yeah we maybe first oh, yeah. started yeah and i think uh quite frankly it's coming full circle because mm. You know, there was a little bit of the wear out of hustle just means you're overworking people and you're doing all this. And, you know, I think, quite frankly, we both always were just like, you, you aren't hustling, you aren't getting ahead. Yeah. And now, full circle, I think we can all agree it's going to take some rolling up the sleeves and some good old fashioned grit mm -hmm. to get out of this mess. Yeah. And, and I think there's this connotation as though hustle only applies towards like your business or whatever that is that you're pursuing. Um, in your business, but I mean, you can hustle with your family. You can hustle in getting in the best shape of your life. Like hustle is just an adjective, an extreme adjective, but just an adjective that go towards whatever in the world that you're doing. Um, but you're right. I mean, we are in a situation where people are going to have to step up their game to get back to where they were and to move forward. And I mean, I don't really know another word to use other than <laughs> they're going to have to hustle. And uh, and we may get into this in the podcast, but I mean, there's things that people can do to, to start that hustle now. Um, but really for us as a group and as a community of people, we wanted to give people, you know, something that they could do tangibly to feel like they're contributing and helping, and uh, that was our heart from the very beginning. And um, it just so happens that uh, they can do it by hustling and uh, hustle to the website gvlhustle.com. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. If, if we if we wouldn't be good marketers if we didn't drop that, but it is gvlhustle.com. Lots of great new merchandise, uh, which Tyler mentioned. My team's had a lot of fun with it. You yeah. know, a new design a day. I think. I think uh, the uh, Stranger Things 80s uh, version came out yesterday. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you know, hope everybody enjoys that. But, you know, let's, you know, create a point of pride in Greenville, you know, showing a lot of things have some kind of, you know, I'm holding up a shirt here, you know, backdrop or something like that. But, you know, we're trying to keep that theme. But, you know, I do think it can be a rallying cry for the community a bit. Uh, you know, we were we did the radio station 98.1. Appreciate uh, Barbie and Rex, um, you know, having us on, yeah. but you know, talking about you know the the community aspect and and really just wanting to be able to contribute in some way. So uh, I know we've got a couple. I think we're doing another sh TV show next week yeah. on it. Um, and and we should probably talk about where the funds are going to i realized just realized we hadn't said that this sounds like we're just trying to sell a bunch of t-shirts i even think i mentioned price point but we haven't actually talked about where it's going so. yeah yeah exactly a hundred percent one hundred percent there's not a penny being made here it's actually uh, a contributing factor with all the resources we're putting towards it towards the united way of greenville they've set up a COVID 19 fund specifically giving back to families heavily with like families that have been impacted in the community and so you know we're not a nonprofit organization we didn't want to get into managing the funds or like trying to figure that out or yeah. anything but so we found and you know and partnered with them uh directly and uh excited so you can look that up directly and i think we're actually gonna be filming me writing the first check we're up to a thousand dollars that's awesome uh, in three days that's awesome so uh yeah so united way of greenville and uh appreciate their partnership and everything they're doing for the community we're just happy to contribute back and you know maybe before we pivot the conversation a bit just maybe and, and you started to tee this up but i'd love to just give everyone a little perspective back to you know the point of why we started greenville hustle yeah you know it's it's funny there were conversations three years ago that ryan and i would have and it was based around this idea of where do we find other people like us and we were both extremely busy whether you want to call that hustling or not <laughs> we were extremely busy i was traveling a whole lot i, I didn't have a lot of time um, at home but looking 
at, you know, how do I find other like-minded individuals, people that are trying to become the best versions of themselves, whether that's entrepreneurs or whether that's just, you know, someone that's, you know, reading books and listening to podcasts and watching the same YouTube series and, you know, people that were doing the things that we're doing. And I kind of exhausted all of the possibilities of where I would find those people. And so it just became this organic thing of, well, I guess we could create it. And that's how mm-hmm. most great things are, are uh, put together. And so really it was just that it was a way to get like-minded people together. Um, for me a little bit selfishly because I didn't know where to find them. So it's kind of like, if you build it, they will come mm-hmm. and, uh, and they did. And it's been just an incredible experience to bring people together. But I think for me, I despise traditional networking. Like for me to go to a traditional networking event where it's one of those, you get your two drink tickets, you hand out 30 business cards, check a box and go home. I just, I despise that. And I despise the shallow small talk conversations of, Hey, what's your name? What do you do? Great. And what's your name? What do you do? And it's just, there's nothing that actually really comes from that. Right. And so what we wanted GVL Hustle to be is a place where you could have more real conversations, that we could create a space for people to be comfortable having real conversations where, you know, it's okay not to be okay, where you can talk about, um, you know, hey, I'm struggling in this area of my business. And chances are there's someone in here that's really good at that. And let me connect you with them. And, uh, you know, that authenticity and transparency, there's just a not a, there's not a lot of places you can go and experience that at scale and so that really for me was what i was most excited about is having a place where i could have real conversations with real people and man you know three years later so many of my relationships that i talk to on a daily and weekly basis now are people that i met at the events and uh, so i think seeing that come to fruition now and come in full circle has been super fulfilling uh, for me Um, whatever it turns into from here it's kind of just icing on the cake it's a lot of those relationships that have been built and built amongst other people within the group as well i've seen it I've seen so many people where they're doing podcasts together and they're filming content together, just hanging out that I'm like, Oh, I remember when those two met, you know, that one meeting. We may have single-handedly started, uh, 20 podcasts in Greenville. Yeah, 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 really. Know, or facilitated the the ideas. I and don't that's know. and that actually brings up one of the one of the greatest examples is we do a lot of Q and A uh, at the events and people asking real questions. And I remember Philip uh, Sessions was asking a bunch of questions about how should I do this? How should I do that in regards to wanting to start a podcast? And I was like, dude, just freaking start it. Like mm-hmm. none of that stuff really matters. Just start it. We have our next GVO hustle meetup. I was thinking it was a month later. And he stands up and he had had like 11 episodes and the podcast was going great. And it was so amazing to see someone ask a question, get feedback and actually implement it. Like imagine that Go he actually <laughs> implemented it and he's still doing it. He's still doing podcasts every week. And uh, so to see that is super, super fulfilling because that's ultimately what we wanted was for people to not only gain knowledge, but have application of the knowledge that they gained. And uh, that's just a, I mean, as far as our desire to give back and pay it forward to the community, it's really giving back and pay it forward to individual people in the community. And then just see what that does as that continues to grow. It'll only better the community. It'll only better Greenville because of a group of people that decided to have these real conversations and actually apply what they're learning yeah and uh you know just to tie a bow on that um you know we've probably had 15 i want to say total events over two years we started aggressive monthly (laughs) uh that turned into every couple months and uh you know we facilitate the meetings we'd have some of the best speakers Mm -hmm. that that money could buy but you didn't pay any money <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know to attend um you know dan walshmitt uh to name names rebecca heiss i mean yeah. you know like some really big names in the speaker circuits yeah. uh, out there so we bring that value and then you know it's a ton of great conversation and and good venues and mm-hmm. you know it was a lot of realness and i think you know it's become the most used business hashtag in the state yep. uh gvl hustle hashtag gvl hustle on instagram and so you know we're looking forward to picking that back up we're we're we had some plans for april's but stay stay in tune for that but you know really proud of what we had built and then the natural you know call it short term maybe long term i don't know we, we make the rules up as we go yeah. but uh uh, with what's going on now. So GVLHustle.com, check it out. And, uh, you know, I do want to transition a bit here, Tyler. Again, you know, I know, 
you've got your hands in a lot of different things and i want people to kind of hear you know perspective like you know with with COVID 19 going on yeah. and you know you, you post i mean you're probably the top one percent of content developers yeah. um and so you've got the personal content side and i know it all overlaps a little bit with business but you know talk to a little bit about your perspective with both the personal and business side with kind of the environment we're in right now yeah i'm glad you teed it up for those two things because there really is two um there's two different sides to it but it's really the same premise and that is just realizing the opportunity that we have in front of us there's plenty of bad there's plenty of negative to talk about and whine about and to feel and and it's very real i I don't downplay that in in any way i think um, there's people that are spending too much time on the negative um but with all the negative that there is there's still positive out there and there's still massive opportunity out there and the way i look at it is for the rest of your and my entire life we may never have a period of time where the effort that we put in is so well received and so appreciated and just as a challenge to those of you that are leaders that are listening your people are going to remember how you responded during this crisis they're going to remember how you showed or didn't show that you care about their well-being as a person their family um, not just as a spoke in the wheel um, in a business sense and so you have an opportunity now just to be talking and reaching out to people and just literally asking them hey man how's it going in your world you know, everybody, city to city, state to state, it's so drastically different. Man, how, how are things going? What can I do to help? What can I do to support you during this time? And, you know, a lot of times it's, it's not going to be a, a clear-cut answer of, well, I'm glad you called because I actually need this, this, and this. But it's just the act of showing that you care, that you made that effort to reach out to them personally, um, that will bear fruit months and years down the road and the loyalty that can be created during that time whether it's loyalty to your company from reaching out to customers clients prospective clients past clients just to see how they're doing during this um, or it's employees or it's family members and friends that you haven't reached out to in a while and so that's a good pivot point to the other side which is you know the reality for for you and i you know we've both got i've got one small child you've got a handful (laughs) and for the rest of our entire life like from now until the day we die we may never and probably will never ever have this three four five six week period of time where we can really invest in our families really invest in our kids and if you think about it if you've got young children and you're listening to this like this is their 9-11 like 5 10 20 years from now they'll talk about this like we talk about 9-11 like i remember where i was i remember what we did i remember you know how my dad you know reacted to it i remember my mom's you know state that she was in during that period of time and so that is a huge for me a huge challenge to people to rise to the occasion because your kids are going to remember how you responded during this crisis they're going to remember you know whether you were you know fully invested and present and available to them or whether you were frustrated and temperamental and trying to get out of the house like they're going to remember all that stuff and so i think about my daughter i think when she you know goes off to college when she gets married one day like she'll remember these weeks that we had to spend this quality time and the conversations that we had and just the time that we spent together one way or the other good or bad they're going to remember and so i think that's a really 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 big challenge for people to not see this as a frustration of i'm trying to work from home my kids like you know maitland had a zoom call um the other day with a bunch of people on it and arden just very was very very concerned with making sure everyone knew that her poop was green just (laughs) over and over and over and it's easy it's easy to get frustrated when you're trying to get stuff done and your kids are you know all over the place but really looking at the opportunity that you have to have some conversations with your kids that you may never have never have had before i mean what's the excuse that we all use for the things that we don't do that we don't have the time like oh i just i just ran out of time well that excuse is completely off the table for the majority of people right now yep. like you've got more time than you've ever had before and so the question is what are you doing with that time that you have and how are you investing that time and i just 
truly believe that there's going to be a lot of people years from now that are going to regret the way they spent this time, regret the way they handled this period of time. And then there's going to be a lot of people that are just absolutely full of gratitude that they had those, you know, hard conversations, that they got to know what was going on with their kids that they never would have known had they not sit down and just talk to them. Um, so I think that for me is, is both sides of the coin there. We can kind of go a little yeah. further into that, but, um, but I'm really, really, really focused on the opportunity that we have. Yeah. And I think, it's you teed it up perfect. It's real easy to be negative right now. Oh yeah, and I and and I have compassion for it. I have a lot of empathy for it. But at the same time, I do recognize that this too shall end. Mm-hmm. And you know, really taking some moments to reflect on you know what you should be thankful for, what what our blessings are, what I mean, <laughs> you know, it. And, and don't get me wrong, some people, a lot of people are going to pass away from this. So you yep. don't want to like diminish that in any way but thinking about you know what you should be thankful for but then naturally my brain and you know my wife nicole would you know vouch for this is every dinner table at night now i'm going uh you know we could start this now you know you should start this now she's in the school you know she's the assistant principal in middle school so uh it's as wonderful as it sounds oh yeah (laughs) it's challenging as it sounds (laughs) but i think about all the opportunities and i know that's probably just the way my brain is wired and that doesn't make that right for every for what's right for me is not right for everyone but i think if people would look through that lens of optimism Mm -hmm. i think if if you can surround yourself with those people tune out either the news or your parents or your cousin eddie or whoever that's feeding you you know the negative stuff i think you can really turn a lot of this into opportunity especially from a business standpoint because if you can pivot from where you're at um into something that that's going to take off whether that's look this social distancing thing is going to stick around mm-hmm. and i'm not saying like six feet and all that but this notion of virtualness yeah this notion of on the go or i just think i wonder if travel is going to ever be the same again hmm. <laughs> i don't yeah. know and so the people that can can look at it through the, through the lens of optimism and opportunity are the ones that are going to win. It's probably no different than any other time in life, but I think that's that's the key for people to be thinking about. Well, and that's what's going to get us out of this as well. Um, I mean, as cliche as it is, but the the fact that it's not what happens to you, it's how you respond or how you react to what happens to you. Um, you know, there are going to be some parts of the country parts of the world that it's going to take longer for them to get out of this because of the way the people are reacting to what's happening right like period and you know that presents to me a level of responsibility for people like you could look at opportunity and responsibility you know i kind of look at those as one and the same but it's a responsibility like as as an american and my responsibility is to make sure that I'm handling it the best that I can so that the people around me that see that can follow suit and the people around them. And it's just a trickle effect. And, you know, that's ultimately what is going to create the greatest opportunity moving forward, because I truly believe when this thing ends, whenever that is, I mean, you can get on the news and people will tell you it's going to be winter and people are telling you it's going to be next week. Who knows? But whenever this ends, I truly believe that it is going to be a launching pad for the economy and for the businesses that are started and for all of the development that happens when people do get back to the workplace. Um, so what can we do now you know, to prepare for that? And what can we do now to be a part of that? Um, that's what that's what I'm focused on. How do you balance, Tyler? You know, maybe we'll get to some tactical, like you know, advice here. How do you balance the the taking the time, like you said, the family time, taking advantage of like those moments, with also the work side of it, like business needs to go on. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, there's opportunities. You're thinking about opportunities as someone that's in that mind space. Yeah. You know. How do you balance those two things right now? So the biggest thing that I'm so we've got insurance agents all over the country, and so these are the conversations that I'm having every day because we're I, like we're we're contacting them daily just to see how they're doing, seeing how we can help. The biggest thing for me is just time blocking because there's no rules right now. Like there's no rules. There's no business hours, and so uh, who's to say that you can't play with your kids and hang out with your family all day? 
but what are you doing from 7 p.m. till midnight? And with us in the in the calls that we're making and the contacts that we're making to our existing and potential customers, they're happening from 7 to 9 p.m. You know, we don't know, you know, what they're doing during that time. But what we do know is that they're even going to be more appreciative because we're going above and beyond reaching out to them at that hour. You know, they know that our competitors are certainly not doing that. And so we're reaching out and we're not even necessarily trying to sell something. You know, if they buy, that's great. But even if they don't, they're so appreciative of us personally reaching out to them. And so I think it's just literally looking at establishing a routine, a routine in a time where routine seems like it's impossible. But there are certain elements of time blocking that you can put in place based around like bedtimes and nap times and things like that. Um, and it's it's all get boils down to communication. Like if you are sitting your family down and saying, hey, from this time to this time, I have to get this done. But hey, when I get done, we're going to go do this. So now they're looking forward to, hey, at four o'clock, we're going to go to the park or we're going to go ride bikes or we're going to go you know, play in the backyard, whatever that is. So that they know that during that time, like dad's got to work. But when he's done, we're going to go do this. And I think it's just a lot of being open with that communication and establishing those boundaries. But being creative in the hours and being creative with the ways that you can do things at maybe different times than you normally would do them, um, especially if it's a lot of just work on the computer and answering emails and following up, things like that. Like, there's nothing to say you can't do that laying in bed at 10 o'clock. Um, there's plenty of time through your, throughout your day, uh, even though it's you know now a little bit more chaotic. So I think it boils down to communication. What do you think, uh, you know, being someone – that posts as much content as you do, that develops as much content as you do, both business and yeah. personal, you know, personal, I guess it's personal. I mean, it's it's all personal. You know, it is all personal. But. So side note on that, if anyone, <laughs> this is just a, a tip for everybody. What is the only time someone tells you, hey, man, this is just business, it's not personal, <laughs> when they're about to screw you? <laughs> yeah. So the reality is it's all personal. <laughs> it's all personal, but I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. So. How are you balancing – I know the content doesn't stop, but maybe the lens of the message, mm -hmm. you know, are you thinking differently about your content right oh, yeah. now? Yeah, very differently and just very more intentional with it. But I also think within that level of intention that there's this fine line of being perceived as taking advantage of the opportunity of the crisis. Like I've been doing some live streams, but at the same time, I'm also a little frustrated with how everybody is live, like every hour of the day. Yeah, and my phone is lit up. Yeah, it's like, you know, so-and-so just went live with so-and-so. It's like, my gosh. Like, <laughs> and so I think people, the reality is people know that people are online and on social media more than ever right now because, you know, they're at home and they can't they go anywhere and do anything else. And so I get that. Um, and I also, you know, am kind of struggling. There's some friction with, within me about that is, you know, do I take advantage of that? Where is the line that you can cross with being over the top with it? But also understanding, like for me, the responsibility of, you know, the people that follow me do look to me for wisdom or for, you know, inspiration or motivation or for technical knowledge. And they need it now more than ever. And so it's it's not wanting to overload them, but it's also not wanting to neglect them during this time. So I think there's a fine line there. And for me, it's looking at a lot of the messaging, like if it's just a graphic post with some copy, making sure that it's extremely empathetic to those that are in a dire situation. Um, because you put something out there, <clears throat> there's a million different people with a million different situations right now. And so for me to put something out there right now that says, like, screw excuses, do the work, well, that's going to offend somebody that right now, you know, their, their grandfather just died and someone at their, laid off. <laughs> in their, yeah, they just got laid off and someone at their wife's work just got diagnosed and she's being quarantined. It's like, what do you mean, screw excuses? Like, these are real. And I think that's a big thing is for people to understand that, like, yes, there's a lot of fear that's not, that's, that is over the top. But fear is a very real thing, and it's a good thing. Like, if you get back to our, you know, caveman days, like fear and stress, like that's how you didn't get eaten by the lion or get eaten by the bear. And we've been through a, a, 
a long period of time where a lot of the fear was self-inflicted um, and not valid. But now there is, I mean, there's a real fear out there. And so it's just being more cognizant of the fact that every person's story is different. And when you're broadcasting these messages out there, understanding how everyone is going to receive that. And so it's toning a little bit of the aggression yeah. <laughs> down, um, but still, you know, being challenging in that, hey, okay, your grandfather did die. Okay, you did lose your job. I promise you sitting there doing nothing isn't going to help. <laughs> and so it's like you want to nudge those people along, but you don't want to do it in a way that puts them on a defensive because that's not going to help anything. And so it's, it's a lot of that. Um, it's taking these core you know, pillars that we always talk about, but in a little bit of a different light. And um, you know, for me, it's, it's a lot of answering private messages, DMs, Facebook messages, uh, and being a lot more thoughtful based on not knowing where their situation is and, and asking. Um, you know, it's, it's become kind of this just routine thing at the end of a live stream or at the end of a video to say, hey, if you need anything, as always, reach out to me. But now it's like when they're reaching out, it's ser like serious stuff. Right. And, and I don't take that lightly at all. And so that, that takes a lot of time, you know, to, to do that. But I think it all boils down to, to having the right intent. Yeah. You know, there's this fascinating push and pull going on right now for in general to me. You've got the government that is trying to do right because they don't want a million people to die. Neither do I, by the way. Yeah. So they want everyone to stop. Mm -hmm. They want you to stay home, do nothing. It shuts down the economy. As natural Americans and the American spirit, we're doers. Yep. We have more time, in a way, uh, more of our own time that isn't controlled by maybe work or schedules and all that. And so you've got more time, but the government and science and nature tells you, hey, we got to stop. we mm -hmm. got social distancing. can't do anything. Yeah. And the American way is to move and to develop and to, to do these things. And then you got to keep food on the table. So there's all this interplay of, oh, I can go, 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 no, stop, don't do anything. Uh, because if you go and do, you create demand. Mm -hmm. If you create demand, you create activity. Government saying, no activity, no activity, don't yeah. do anything. It's a weird intersection right now yeah. for me of where the and, <laughs> and, and I think it's just, it demands creativity. <laughs> I mean, it demands thinking outside the box. Um, there's a lot of virtual things happening that, you know, quite frankly, they aren't as effective, but they're what we have. And so a lot of the stuff that we're doing is, is, is a lot of it's virtual and you miss that personal touch of being in front of somebody, but it's the best you can do with the situation that we have in front of us. And, uh, but you're right. I mean, there's <laughs> uncertainty is paralyzing to most. Yes. And I think that's the problem is when you don't know what to do, you do nothing. Instead of looking at what's the one thing that I can do today to move the ball forward. And just, I mean, it's it's a simple process, but most things that are simple, it's easier not to do than it is to do it. Paralysis and so, from analysis. <laughs> yeah, and I mean, like I talked to an agent and they're like, man, I'm so glad you called because I'm sitting here and I'm just, I, I, don't, I don't know where to start. And I'm like, okay, well, what are your options? Well, I could do this, I could do that, I could do that. Okay, what? What feels like the most important right now? Well, probably this. That sounds like a great place to start. <laughs> I mean, it's, <laughs> yeah. but it's like it takes someone walking you through that process <laughs> because the majority of people they 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 can't when there's so much fear when there's so much uncertainty, your brain becomes illogical, mm. and that's the reality. And so, for people that are out there right now that are listening to this, and they're like, "Man, he's talking to me." Like I've I have allowed myself to become paralyzed. Like. I've got so many things I can do that I'm not doing anything that it's literally just taking one little step at a time. Like tomorrow, what's one important thing I can do offensively? What's one important thing I can do defensively? And what's one important strategic move that I can make? And I completely stole that from Tom Shea's new book that's coming out in <laughs> April. Uh, it's called Three Simple Things. And that's what, is, that's what it all boils down to. But it's, it's literally just anything is better than nothing. And any progress, even slow progress, is still progress. And for me, like I'm, I'm addicted to progress. I think progress is what ultimately creates happiness and fulfillment. 
And in a time like now where you can feel like, well, I'm only able to do this when I usually would do that, still that progress is still progress. Like when you lay down to go to bed that night, you will still feel like you did something. And so that, that's the big thing is is do something and that actually tees me up perfectly because there's this quote that I've been saying uh, and reading and sending to people that I think has never been more true. It's an old quote by uh, Edward Everett Hale. And he said, I am only one, but still I am one. I cannot do everything, but still I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do the something I can do. So I'll read that again real quick. Mm-hmm. I am only one, but still I am one. I cannot do everything, but still I can do something. And because I cannot do everything, I will not refuse to do the something I can do. And so there's so many people that are sitting there and they're like, man, like I, you know, there's so much that I need to do. Just do something. Like do something today, something productive. Um, and for a lot of people, that's, that's going to be difficult. Yeah. But most things that are important (laughs) are (laughs) anything you know how are you feeling you know i know a lot of people if they haven't followed you will go follow you all right wow they'll see the volume of content that you're doing you know maybe you know just to as we start to close out a bit here you know talk about maybe some tactical value of personal branding anything in that realm you know we've i've had you on before yeah. um and talked you know down that alley and the basement episode <laughs> i think Back it was basement. it was that was <laughs> radical was born mm-hmm. like uh that that week and uh yeah, here awesome. we are you know all grown up in our podcast <laughs> studio and uh, you know fastest growing We're agency in south up. carolina yeah. so uh, awesome. shameless plug uh but uh I don't know how fast anybody's growing in South Carolina anymore, so that tagline might have to be the uh, I made a, I made a phone call today. I'm the fastest moving entrepreneur in Greenville. Exactly. Uh, but any any tactical personal branding advice, you know, both COVID nineteen related and maybe just in general that now now that you're I mean you're I don't know five plus years and I'm here ten plus years I don't you know like yeah. who can keep up but like now like versus then you know in 2020 i think the biggest shift that i've gone through mentally in regards to the personal branding and just branding in general is i am far less concerned with growing the number of followers and i'm far more concerned with going deeper with the deeper with the followers that i have i hate that i just ruined that because that was a great quote (laughs) you had me i was hanging on it so it's it's it's, it's not looking to go wide it's looking to go deeper and you know i think so many people that are out there especially in those beginning stages of building a brand but even years into it you get so focused on all these analytics and all the data and okay we put this out at this time and it got this reach and this engagement we put this out and they're comparing and contrasting and you can drive yourself absolutely crazy i just don't look at any of it anymore i really don't look at any of it anymore we in my media team meetings we don't talk about growth anymore we talk about the impact that the content that we're putting out is making you know when we meet every friday morning at seven you know when we look at the roi i'm i'm reading messages that i got from people and talking about that interaction and how powerful it was and life-changing it was and i talk about we did that like like you that created that graphic you that you know created that copy You know, you that did this, you that did that, like we as a team created the environment for that conversation to happen that was very impactful for that person. And so that's what I look at as far as the ROI. So I think for the person out there that's got 100 followers that wants to have 100,000, well, what are you doing for the 100? And in doing that and in going deeper with the 100, that's the way it'll grow. And more importantly, that's the way it'll grow the right way. Right. And so I think for me, hopefully this will be a shift uh, across the across the board, but I am far less concerned. I think there's a shift from wanting to be an influencer to wanting to be influential. <laughs> and it is a radical shift, not to plug you there, <laughs> but it is a radical shift because there's a lot of people out there that want to be an influencer, but aren't influential. And I could name a ton. And we all know them when we see them. It's like they're putting out a lot of stuff and they're showing a lot of cool things, but you know, what's the intent behind it? Are they really making an impact? And one thing that 
you know, not to drop Tom Shea's name again, but I was having, I had an amazing conversation with him yesterday and he really has this kind of like five point plan in the very last part, which would be, you know, the least important is the why you're doing it. And it starts with B, which is who am I? So it goes from who am I to what do I need to the team, which is who do I associate with, then the action plan, then the why. It's my belief that the vast majority of influencers live in the action plan and why. Action plan and why. You know, whether it's Simon Sinek that started this or not, everyone felt, follows suit and it's all about, well, why are you doing the things that you're doing? Start with your why. You got to know why you're doing it. And then let's put an action plan for the why. But if you don't know who you are, <laughs> there's nothing else. Yeah. So, uh, as a challenge to the people that are listening to this, you know, that, that phrase, I am blank. And there's multiple is the most important thing that you can really get a grasp of and everything else will follow after that. So once you realize like I am a creator, I am unbreakable, I am a leader, I am whatever that is for that person, then let's take a basic example. I'm a runner. Well, then on the do, I, I run, I train. And for it to be so dialed in, and it's easy for athletes and for artists, like if I'm a painter, of course I paint. If I'm a runner, I run. But to create that similar dynamic when you ask a runner, like, you know, why are you, why are you doing all these crazy miles every week? Like, why do you do that? It's like, because I'm a runner. Well, what does that mean if your I am is I'm a leader? Right. What are those things that you do that if someone asked you, well, Man, why did you spend six and a half hours till nine forty-five p.m. last night at your office calling all of your agents? Because I'm a leader. That's what leaders do. And then from there on to the people that you associate with, then your action plan, and then the why. But the why ties back to where it all starts with who you are. And so I think that's a big shift because the influential people live in the be and the do. Influencers live in the action plan and the why. And it is a drastic difference in the impact that's made when you unpack those things. And so to me, that's where a lot of my mindset is shifting. So as my mindset shifts, the content shifts and the messaging shifts. And it's ultimately boils down to trying to be more influential than be an influencer. I don't really even know what being an influencer means anymore. Because Well, it's all, it, I think it started out as uh, my analogy would be being the Super Bowl or being the cooking channel. Yeah. You know. The cooking channel, the the ratings for the cooking channel are extremely low, but the twenty thousand people that that are watching it every night and I don't know these numbers and making them up, yeah. But they buy a lot of shit, yeah. And they are true loyal, and that channel is very influential on them. Yeah. The Super Bowl gets three hundred billion people watching it worldwide, if there's even that many people in the world. The uh, and it's very wide yeah. but not deep yeah you know it's, it's just a, an event and so i think that's boiling it down a little bit yeah and, and to take it a step further you know when you really when you come to that realization and i feel like if people will like literally pray meditate like spend some time like whiteboarding this out just journaling it out of who am i and they really get a hold of it like when you figure it out you you'll know one thing that I've always struggled with with my personal brand is when people come to your Instagram page, they should know what they're coming there for and what they're going to get. And I think a lot of my friction that I had with that because I was putting out so many different things, all these different podcasts, different messages, different you know vlogs and all this stuff was like I wanted you to get whatever you needed. Like whatever yeah. you need today, like yeah. there's something, some, there's something that'll hopefully some of that, get that a dash of this. But when you, but when you really come to that realization of who you are, it helps you curate that content to where people know who you are. And again, back to these example of a runner. Like if you go to a runner's Instagram page, you know, like I'm going to go there to get motivated or to learn something about running or to get a new type of training that I can try. Like they know, and that's where that stickiness I think uh, is created, and that's where ultimately all the engagement is created because people know that when they see you pop up in the feed, oh, it's probably going to be about this. I love that. Let me go engage with that. And when it's just random stuff that's coming out and random quotes that are just 
you know, produced just for content's sake, uh, you lose that. And so I think that's uh, a good tactical piece of advice for people just to look at their own, you know, social media presence and say like, what it, what do I get when I come here? You know, what am I looking for when I come here and put themselves in the shoes of the person that's following them or potentially might follow them and see how clear it is. And if it's not clear, then that probably is an indication of you don't really know exactly who you are and what you're trying to do. Bingo. Yeah. And, you know, I think uh, from there we'll close it out. Yeah, man. And, you know, I really appreciate you coming on. For and sure. Your partnership with yeah, GVL Hustle and, you know, your friendship and, yeah. you know, just keeping it real and being kind of a beacon of, of positivity out there for everyone. For and sure. uh, where can everybody that's listening keep up with you these days? Yeah, so everything's at Tyler Jack Harris. Um, you can go to tylerjackharris.com, but it's easier. I'm um, most engaged on Instagram, uh, still bigger on Facebook, but I'm. I'm Instagram stories is my favorite thing in the world. So you are definitely um, the king of the stories. Yeah, I mean, I've come around, but man, I'm like, God, I see your line of dashes, and I'm like, ah, oh, I think I have four today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I I try to treat my Instagram stories like a vlog. Like I want people to get like the daily life yeah. of of kind of what it what we're doing and what we're up to. And to me, it's kind of like a little bit of a peek behind the curtain. Yeah, because you got the highly produced content, but people really want to see the raw you know, behind the scenes type stuff to where they can really get to know you as a person. Yep. And so that for me is super important. So definitely engage with me there. And like I said, you know, when I say reach out to me, if you need something, like I really mean that. Yeah. Um, and I'm always going to respond. I won't, res I won't open it until I have time to think and thoughtfully respond. That's a big pet peeve of mine. I hate for people to see the scene and, <laughs> oh, yeah. and then wait three days. I until have people I have call time. me out on that too because yeah. I'll see it and I'll like, oh no, no, they know yeah. I saw like, it. Like I will not I'll click it right until I know because I know because <laughs> I I I know what could be on the other side of that first little line that you see that there could be a lot more depth. There could be seven paragraphs underneath that, and I do not want to get caught in a situation because the way I look at it is there are a lot of people out there that need help. And maybe I've reached out to people before, or it may be the first time they've ever reached out to someone and actually asked them like a real question based on something they're really going through. And if I chose to, in that delicate moment, to not respond, that could literally be the nail in the coffin for them, literally, mm -hmm. at times it's been that way, um, when I've responded and it's been a positive thing. Hopefully that's never happened negatively, but it could also be the nail in the coffin for them to reaching out to anybody else. Like, well, I reached out to Tyler. He didn't even, he didn't even look at it. And so I'm not going to reach out to anybody else. And so I just, I take that really, really seriously. Well, cool. I really appreciate you coming on mm -hmm. and, um, Hey, and kudos to you. I definitely want to acknowledge you as well, because all of this GVL hustle and the merchandise. I mean, this is, I've, I have had no part of it other than applauding it from behind the scenes. Uh, but it's really incredible. Um, you know, there was a period of time where, I mean, I was just stretched so thin and I told Ryan, I was like, look, I'll be at the events, but I, I mean, I just, I'm at capacity. And so Ryan and his team have really, I mean, they're the machine and the engine behind GVL hustle. Uh, I feel extremely honored just to be still a part of it. Um, because it is something that I feel is super important and super needed. Um, and definitely want people to go to the website and buy some merchandise because it is going to a good, a good cause and it's cool stuff. Like I'd, I'd wear it every day. Yeah. So yeah. And shout out to my team. They've been great. For sure. And it's been, it's, I think it's been a healthy distraction for us a little bit. Yeah. I mean, our, our clients come first, obviously, yeah. but you know, some of our clients have, you know, quite frankly, gone away, yeah. you know, at least figuratively yeah. speaking. Um, and so it's been a good distraction for them and they're behind it. And so, uh, but I appreciate you saying that and yeah. I appreciate my team, uh, when they hear this, you know, knowing, uh, everything they put into it and yeah. we hope to write big checks every couple of weeks to uh, the uh, United Way of Greenville. But that'll do it for today's episode of the Radical Marketing Podcast. I want to thank Tyler Harris for coming on, and we'll see you next time.
Thank you again for watching this episode of the My Living Legacy vlog. Again, gvlhustle.com is where you can go to check out all the different gear. It's not just shirts and hoodies. We've got cell phone cases and bags and mugs and all kinds of good stuff. But you would know that 100% of your proceeds are going to the United Way of Greenville's COVID-19 fund, which is instrumental in our community and helping those families that are in dire need right now. So as always, I appreciate you watching. If there's anything that I can do to help, just let me know.